With that penalty shootout, the real drama began at London's Wembley Stadium. England missed three of their five penalties to lose to Italy 3-2 in the Euro 2020 final. England was beaten at home. Coming home. The chant had been a major driving force in motivating England to end their trophy drought. But it was not to be. Italy won the European Championship for the first time since 1968. Utter disbelief bone-crushing disappointment and tears. English fans were left understandably heartbroken. Nothing could have justified this. The fans turned violent. Italian fans were attacked after the match. Racial slurs were hurled. Even England's own players were not spared. Marcus Rashford, Jadon Sanko, and Bukayo Saka. The three players of color who missed England's penalties started receiving a barrage of abuse on social media. Arsenal star Saka was targeted with racist language and emojis on Instagram. Users told him, get out of their country and go back to Nigeria. The very next day, a mural of England soccer player Marcus Rashford was defaced with racist graffiti. The incident happened in Manchester, where Rashford plays his club football for Manchester United. Though the vandalized parts of the mural were covered immediately, it unmasks the layers of racism in football. The thrilling final was overshadowed by scenes of violence and disgraceful behavior of fans. Around 60,000 spectators were watching the match inside the stadium when a small number of ticketless fans broke the security cordon and jumped the perimeter walls of Wembley before they tried to make their way inside to watch the finale. This viral video shows chaos at turnstiles, where ticketless fans can be seen getting some knockout punches from those who had tickets. In another video, fans can be seen rushing past security officers and racing up a flight of stairs at the exterior of the stadium. And that's not all. In a disrespectful gesture, a section of fans was heard booing the Italian national anthem ahead of the final. 
The thuggish acts by English fans brings back into focus football's troubled tryst with racism and xenophobia. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who was present at the match, condemned the racist abuse aimed at players of the England football team. The Duke of Cambridge, Prince William, who was present at the game with his wife Kate Middleton and their son George, had this to say. He said, I am sickened by the racist abuse aimed at England players after last night's match. It is totally unacceptable that players have to endure this abhorrent behavior. It must stop now, and all those involved should be held accountable. Interestingly, England was one of several teams that had been taking a knee as the gesture against racism before games at Euro 2020. So did players from Portugal and Belgium. However, this Black Lives Matter gesture also did not go down well with many English fans. The Football Association said it was appalled by the online racism and such disgusting behavior by fans was not welcome. We will do all we can to support the players affected while urging the toughest punishments possible for anyone responsible, the FA said in a statement. Social media companies have also been criticized for the proliferation of harmful content on their platforms. After the incident, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that these companies would need to be fined 10% of their global revenues if they do not get hate off their platforms in legislation to tackle online racist abuse. Johnson also added that the government would change existing football banning orders to ensure that people found guilty of racist abuse against footballers are banned from football games. We made it absolutely clear that no one should boo the England team. And, uh, abs and Mr. Speaker, uh, what we're doing now is taking, following the, following the racist abuse that our players sadly suffered on Sunday night and, and thereafter, we're taking practical action. So in addition to changing the football uh, banning order regime, uh, last night I met representatives, representatives of Facebook, of Twitter, of TikTok, of Snapchat, uh, of Instagram, and I made it absolutely uh, clear to them that we will legislate to address this problem, Mr. Speaker, in the online harms bill. And unless they get, unless they get hate and racism off their platforms, they will face fines amounting to 10% of their global revenue. Perhaps this is the need of the hour, because English football is consumed by racism and hatred. Football hooliganism continues to flourish and the worst abuse is typically reserved for black footballers and ethnic minorities. The sports community has expressed solidarity with English national football team players who were racially abused. Tennis star Naomi Osaka took to Twitter and posted a photo of the four footballers with golden crowns above their heads. The 23-year-old Japanese star has been quite vocal about racism and mental health. At last year's US Open, she staged a unique kind of protest. She wore seven different face masks for each round of the tournament, all bearing the names of black victims of racism and police brutality. Her advocation of the Black Lives Matter movement has also been showcased in a recent documentary, simply called Naomi Osaka. Formula One is one of the richest sports in the world. It is also a white dominated sport. Lewis Hamilton, the only black driver in Formula One, condemned the racist attacks seen at the Euro 2020 final, calling it unacceptable. Hamilton has inspired many with his comments and actions in support of racial equality. Last year, six drivers refused to join the Formula One world champion in taking a knee for George Floyd before the season opening Austrian Grand Prix. It's been over a decade since Hamilton became the best 
driver in the world. In the years since, no other black driver has made it to F1. On July 13th, the seven-time Formula One champion released a comprehensive report, the Hamilton Commission, that details the systemic barriers faced by black people in motorsport and in engineering fields at large. So the question should not be how to end racism in sports, but how can sports be used to end racism?